Welcome to uh, this video, which is going to teach you how to navigate simple practice. So when you log into simple practice, this is exactly what it looks like. Uh, you have your calendar. You can change the default view from month to week to day. Um, I like to keep it on week. It's my fave. Um, right here, you have arrows where you can go back and forth um, from week to week and see that um, what appointments you have repeating, um, what you have coming up next week, and so on. Um, up here, you have a selection where um, you can actually see more than one um, clinician schedule. Um, so not everybody has this option, but if you do have this option, you can see here that maybe we want to see, um, this is Marticia's schedule, but maybe she needs to, um, have some co-counseling with JB and needs to match up their schedules. So she could click that right here and then just hit apply. Um, now we're going to go ahead into the appointment. So you can see right here, Tuesday, June 6th, um, there is an appointment with John Doe at three o'clock. So when you click on this appointment, you can see that uh, you have a little more details. So up here is John Doe's name, which we'll get into in just a little bit where that link takes you. Um, but most importantly, we have his name and phone number and email. So this is really important because if John is running a little late and is missing his appointment, you know, five, 10 minutes in, we could go ahead and give John a call um, or shoot him an email or both um, to go ahead and just remind him of his appointment, find out if he's having technical difficulties or he's lost, dot, dot, dot. Down here, you can see, again, the date and the time. It also lets you know the duration of the appointment. You can see that the clinician is already set and you have the location as the main office. This means that the location will be at the main office. Now, if there is another location marked, um, what happens is that link is sent in the reminder. So it's really, really important, especially when you're creating appointments, which we'll get to in a few minutes. It's really important that you have that location correct. Then we can also see right here, these little circles mean repeat. And this appointment repeats every week on Tuesday and ends after 30 appointments. Um, that 30 appointments is just the default. You don't have to worry about that. And again, you may not even be putting appointments in, but just in case, I want you guys to know how to do so. Um, now we're gonna look at how to create an appointment. So we're gonna go up here to the top, hit schedule appointment. And what you'll do right here is just enter the name of the client and they'll go ahead and pop up and you select the date and the time. And of course the location, and you gotta just make sure that you select the right location. Um, and then here you can select repeat and there's some options if you wanna do every other week, once a month, la 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 la. Now let's say you have something else that you have to do. Maybe you have supervision, maybe you have a meeting or a training. Um, those things can also be added to your schedule when you come up to your schedule and hit other. So when you come to your schedule, you will see there's a little space here for the title. Let's just say supervision. And um, again, you would just set the date and time. Yourself, um, your name should be under clinician. And then again, just the location um, and if this repeats or not. And what you'll do is you'll just go ahead and save that. And it went to today, which is uh, the week previous to the one we're looking at. So promise you it's there. Now let's look at how to cancel an appointment. What if John says, hey, I'm out of town, can't come on Thursday. You just select the appointment. When the details pop up, you can see this little button right here has a drop down menu to show whether you are going to um, cancel the appointment. If there's a late cancellation, like less than 24 hours, 
Maybe the appointment is canceled because you're out of the office um, or if the patient no shows. Now, let's get kind of crazy. We're gonna look into file information. Um, if you are looking for some information on John Doe, let's say his phone number and email is not here, or um, you're in the appointment and you're just um, curious about some things about John Doe's demographics. When you select John Doe, it will actually take you to um, his file. Now, this area is really important for a couple of different reasons. The first reason this is important is because of this administrative note right here at the top. Now, the first line will always say where this referral came from. So John Doe was a provider list and he has Blue Cross Blue Shield. Awesome. Now, right here, you'll have reason for counseling and it shows that his reason for counseling is depression. So it'll always show what that reason is that you're seeing the patient. So if you have a new patient, you can go ahead and click on their name. It'll pull up their file and you can see their reason for counseling and how they came to C4. Now, let's say you are looking here and you were like, man, I need a correct phone number for them. And I've got them on the line right now. We're here in counseling. And I know I don't have a phone number on file. You simply come up to this space up here. You're gonna go to edit. And here you can enter in the um, any type of demographics for, um, for the patient. You can add phone number, um, email. You can click right here if you want to add address. Um, and you can also add date of birth. Um, the other thing that's important that we collect for insurance purposes is the sex at birth. So you can choose that um, if they are okay sharing that with you. And you just go down to the bottom and hit save client. That's about it for the um, basics of simple practice.